yeah, let's start with the seventh exercise. Um, since I closed my notebook, uh, I will not be able to run the code today, but um, I guess this is not really necessary since you can always just um, yeah, get the solutions online and run them by yourself. So uh, there's no big loss, I guess. Um, first, first thing I, I want to mention about last exercise, we had the question about the eligibility traces. And uh, this was regarded to when they are going to be resetted. So for everybody who doesn't know what is going on, uh, we discussed in the last exercise uh, eligibility traces like the recursive backwards view uh, compared to the end step methods. And uh, in the code I presented you, the initialization was performed before we called each episode and uh, the right way to implement it is to initialize it with the zeros for each episode. So after you, uh, an episode terminates, you would start again. Uh, this is also corrected in the exercise, but as you can may see here, this is also TD Lambda and for Zaza Lambda, you would also Add the action uh, to the yeah to the tab tabu, tabula, and there are also several methods which are not that discussed in detail in the um, in the lecture itself because it's not that used that that often. But um, if you want to have a look at it, you can uh, look it up here in the uh, Sato and Button uh, Button Bartle book and um, yeah, implement them by yourself in the exercise and see if you get better results. I've implemented them and they don't seem to have that significant uh, impact of the results. So yeah, we just leave it out there. Okay, but uh, in the last, last lecture last week uh, or for two weeks, uh, we talked about uh, learning and planning using um, yeah, models. And uh, yeah, this exercise deals now with, again, the inverted pendulum we saw last in the last exercise. And uh, we recall here some functionalities we implemented there. So we have this discretized state uh, function and the continualized action function here. Uh, if you yeah, want to have a more detailed look on that, um, check out the last exercise. I guess it's uh, explained there in more detail. And uh, the first thing that we were going to do is to implement the DynaQ algorithm. So this is now an uh, off-policy algorithm. And uh, when we implement later on the uh, yeah, model-based solutions, uh, we want to always differentiate, oh, so maybe first recall, uh, you see the n here. The n here in this case is now something different to the n we saw last time because last time the n was like how many steps we want to predict into the future. And in this exercise, the n now means um, how many learning step steps do we do uh, between each episode. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind uh, when you check out the solution. And uh, the first thing that we yeah, do here is now to implement a function. We call this uh, pendulum DynaQ and uh, it takes some arguments here. We can later like uh, choose the parameters here, but um, in order to ensure that, <laughs> in order to ensure that the, uh, yeah, uh, every every trial we made has like the same resources. We want to keep like um, this equation here constant. So the number of episodes, the number of steps, and the number of learning steps uh, should be kept constant uh, for each of the exercises. So um, yeah, once again, we we implement the pendulum v1, and uh, we initialize here. This is from the, um, I mean, I can also show you, I hope. Do I, 
This is uh, the implementation of the DynaQ algorithm itself, uh, which is depicted here. And um, yeah, uh, we yeah, initialize here our action values and the policy. And we also now want to use a model, or in this case, we implement the model here, which uh, stores our uh, data. And um, we also um, yeah, have like our cumulative reward here. And uh, yeah, this one you should implement by yourself. This is like the typical um, DynaQ algorithm. Uh, I guess here's nothing special. Okay, maybe, maybe one thing here. You see that our um, action we uh, cho chose on the, uh, on the environment is here uh, selected um, uh, epsilon greedy. And later on in the action value update, since we use the DynaQ algorithm, uh, we take the max uh, over uh, all the uh, action or the possible action values. So here is like the off policy algorithm when it comes to the um, update of the action values. And in our code here, we see uh, here uh, that we have implemented our model. Uh, so that means uh, in each step we iterate um, or we randomly sample an uh, state and from the state an action and uh, we update our action values accordingly uh, by looking at okay how how would our uh, how yeah how would our experience um, predict the future action values uh, and therefore update it here and yeah, as I, as I said, uh, we also implement here the experiment um, function, which we can then easily call and give it our uh, policy pi in order to run the experiment either in uh, random mode or not. And we can also set the number of steps we want to have a look at. And I guess, yeah, I guess when I run it here, I mean, I, ca I can try, but since OBS Studio is running and um, I think I have to, I think I have to, it has to, yeah, it has to train again. And I mean, we can stare like for four minutes on this bar, but I guess I just, um, we have a look at the results uh, later on. So um, what what is done here is now uh, in, the, in the first experiment, we want to uh, try the DynaQ algorithm without any, um, without any, uh, model learning step in between. And, uh, here we chose 5,000 uh, episodes. Oh. Uh, I guess then it pops off again, but let's try. Uh, 5,000 episodes. Uh, we use 5,000 5, episodes. Each, each episode has then 500 steps. And as I said, we don't want to have any uh, kind of uh, model learning. So that leaves us with like a constant value of uh, 2.5 uh, million, whatever. Uh, we just want to keep this uh, value in mind because uh, uh, we later on want to choose the, the uh, yeah, episode steps or the episodes uh, accordingly to that. Okay, so here we see the standard parameter, or I don't know uh, which, what we call them, but um, normally gamma 0.9 is, is typical, epsilon 0.0, 0.1 is typical, and the alpha 0.1 is also typical. Yeah, and then we, we run our experiment, as you can see here, and um, we then again want to run the experiment, but now with some learning steps and we set the learning steps of nine. So there comes an um, yeah, uh, even, even number when it comes to the uh, number of episodes. So we uh, reduce the number of episodes we use, um, but we keep this value constant. And again, we run our experiment here. And in the end, when we plot it, what we can see here is that by using uh, the uh, model or the model from experiments, uh, that we have a faster learning or 
not only a faster learning, but uh, it is also when it comes to uh, a good policy, it, it converges faster. And um, mm, now, now the question is why why should we use learning? Because um, yeah, yeah, I mean, let's in in the end we we come up with the same results. It is faster, but we again we don't train that long. And um, the good thing by using a model from experience is first of all that you uh, don't have to wait that long, um, since here in this simulation it is kind of easy uh, because um, the data is. Uh, instantly or not instantly but almost instantly available uh, when we use reinforcement learning in uh, real life applications it could be that our whatever experiment we we uh, try this reinforcement learning algorithm on has some delay and we need to wait for hours till we get the next sample and therefore we can speed up the learning by learning from experience and also when it comes to safety um, safety applications where you yeah don't want to um, blow up your your plant uh, you also uh, can model this in, in um, yeah so so uh, when it when it comes to modeling there uh, you also can you you don't blow up things by taking actions which might uh, yeah, uh, could be dangerous for your uh, experiment itself. So this is one nice thing to keep in mind when it comes to modeling, and um, this is this is quite quite good because we can use it um, almost every time. Uh, at least, even sometimes when you interact with models, the model could change over time, like when you have some temperature changes or. Yeah, I mean stochastic influences. Then um, yeah, the model would change, and your uh, model buffer you have would be not sufficient. Uh, but there will be uh, in the later exercises or also in the lecture uh, we will deal with this. Um, the second, the second task in this exercise was to use um, simulation-based planning. And uh, the goal here is that um, by having not only the experience, but maybe also some insights of our model, that we can implement the model uh, by ourselves in order to boost our training. And um, first of all, always, if we want to implement it, we need to use a model which is quite accurate at least. Uh, we will see this later on, but in our case here, where we say, okay, we want to control this inverted pendulum, and I showed you last time where you could find like the differential equations for it, you can go, um, yeah, it is straightforward to um, came up with a model by yourself. And um, here, again, the nice thing is, uh, when you, when it, compared to, to real-time measurements, you would also have delays in the real-time measurement. And if you simulate the model in software, then it gives you the uh, data instantly. And this is always good when it, when it comes to uh, evaluating your policy or train your policy. So um, yeah, this is now, uh, we want to integrate this uh, model into our DynaQ algorithm, uh, yada, yada. Uh, we have here our uh, differential equations for our angular velocity and our angle. And we also have the exact parameters we use, we use in our simulation. And um, yeah, we discretize it with the forward Euler. That means uh, yeah, we approximate our derivative by the difference equation here. And then if we kind of um, yeah, rewrite these equations, then we can say that our uh, next time step is uh, our yeah, derivative here times Ts plus uh, or uh, at the last step. And um, yeah, by doing so, we can, can come up, okay, uh, we also need a reward function here, which is, I guess, exactly the one they use in the model. And um, yeah, we define the states as, uh, as shown in the last exercise. 
So this is, I guess, all straightforward. And then, okay, here we just re-implement the pendulum model, uh, which is also provided from the gymnasium API. So um, keep in mind that uh, in a normal, in a real world experiment, you would not have like this gymnasium API, but you would need to implement it here by yourself. And um, yeah, we just uh, code in our constants here. And um, as we see, or as we have looked at in the other exercises, uh, we still need our um, reset function here, which yeah, just uh, randomly samples our, our angle and our angular velocity. And um, we also implement the step function where we can apply a torque and this talks uh, or this talk is then uh, clipped here um, in order to not uh, exceed the boundaries and then we compute the reward and we do here the um, yeah the calculation of the differential differential equation yeah and then it is all stuffed together in this array and uh, yeah returned together with the reward Yo, and um, as you see, uh, I mean, how long does it take? <laughs> yeah, I would show you some results here, but believe me, it it just works. It stabilizes the pole. Um, again, if I would run this, it would just take really long, and uh, this is kind of kind of stupid. Okay, where where was I? Uh, I guess. I showed you this one here, cumulative, no. So, okay, then we use uh, the pendulum model Dyna framework. Uh, this is copied, I guess, from above, uh, where you have uh, like now our environment and now we also define our model, uh, which was uh, again uh, shown, shown here. So this was the model and oh, Maybe this one, maybe this one works here. Let's have a look. There should be some random actions, no? Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, pendulum, pendulum model DynaQ, uh, we define our pendulum model here. We initialize our action state values. Again, this is exactly the same code as above. Um, we have here uh, our uh, epsilon greedy uh, policy which shows us the action and we use this here we use here the uh, yeah um, max to update the action values so again this is off policy and um, here in we now we do not use our uh, we do not use our um, experience but rather uh, gather the data from our model and in the end, uh, we return the cumulative reward history and our learned policy when we have finished the, uh, the experiment. And what we can see here now is that um, when we compare uh, the exercise or when we compare the task, uh, we learn from experience and we learn from the model here. And what we see, let me make this a bit more obvious, is that we have a somewhat similar behavior. Be oh, okay. Uh, because our because our models or, or our model is exactly the same as in the um, as in the uh, gymnasium gymnasium uh, environment. Uh, but we see here that the yeah um, the uh, we we learn faster, we converge faster to the optimum policy since we can train on the optimal model. Yeah, and um, to highlight this or to maybe uh, make this a bit more clear, uh, I also trained a model where I um, changed the parameters. So um, I set the parameters to. Uh, wrong values, so this gravity like 20 and the mass and the length are also uh, kind of off. And um, 
again, uh, so, so here we also train for like uh, 19, uh, 19 steps. And what we see here is now that when our model, when our model is wrong, mm. when our model is wrong, uh, it it has some difficulties and it is not even not even better and it's still uh, the the uh, the model using the uh, experience uh, will be converging to the true one and um, the yeah model with or oh, so so the DynaQ algorithm with the wrong model will converge to uh, yeah some wrong values there I guess. Well, should look it up. Okay, and uh, no execution today. Um, yeah, I guess that was a really short, uh, short exercise. But um, this was also due to the, due to the, yeah, not to my failure because I closed the laptop. Do you guys have have any questions about those algorithms? Anything that is unclear? On policy, off policy, it's all fine. Anything I should explain in more detail? Okay, that seems not the case. Then thanks for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Okay, thank you.